Hello, welcome again to Jackrabbit Journal. The Jackrabbits get back uh, back on track, Hank, after the loss to Northern Iowa. 39-0 win at Missouri State. Uh, the Bears are the last place team in the Missouri Valley Conference, but the Jackrabbits did what they should have done, jumped on them, shut them out, and beat them. Darn right they did, and the key word you said there, shut out. This defense is playing fantastic football right now, Tom. It, it's fun to watch. Uh, you know, since the NDSU game, they've only given up two touchdowns. You know, these, these guys have been uh, really firing on all cylinders. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what the offense was able to get going. Uh, good to see number 16 back out there last Saturday. Uh, but the boys on the defensive side of the ball are flying around and really making things happen. All right. Uh, as you said, Zach Lujan back as the starter at quarterback. Probably will be the rest of the way. Uh, he looked good in this one. 15 of 19 passing, 208 yards, uh, two touchdowns, a big day for Jay. Jake Winicky, seven catches for 161 of those yards and a touchdown. He has 24 touchdown catches in 22 games as a Jackrabbit. He is tied with Jerron Harris right now for third on the list of career receiving touchdowns at SDSU. And the uh, defense gets the first road shutout since the Jackrabbits joined the Missouri Valley Conference in 2008. SDSU leads the Valley in points allowed right now, giving up just 10.6 per game in conference play. And as you said, they've allowed only six touchdowns in five games in the conference, just one touchdown in the last three games, and uh, they've been playing lights out. And they wanted a shutout against Northern Iowa, didn't get it, they get one against Missouri State. They, they did, and they did so in convincing fashion. This way, you know, 3.3 yards per carry is what they allowed the Bears to. That, that's a ridiculous stat. It's a stat that'll help you win football games. And right now, these guys are the heart and soul of this team. The offense got back on track, which is great, um, but any championship football team, it starts with sound defense, and that's what the Jacks are playing right now. All right, back to the quarterback platoon uh, question, if you want to call it that. Uh, David Brown, our man, was in Missouri and asked Zach Lujan and Taryn Christian after the game about splitting time at quarterback. I guess that's a question for the coaching staff. Um, you know, both of us have to just be ready at all times. You know, we never know when the other's going to go down or when our number's going to be called, but uh, I, overall I thought this was a great performance from the entire team. It just really felt different, you know. I've never, I've never done anything like that before. I don't think he has, so uh, it was something new for us. Uh, so I don't know. Once, once we kind of got used to it and got into the role, uh, things went a lot better. Uh, we were both able to move the wall pretty well, so it was, it was good to just come out here and get a win. I think everything could take a little more getting used to. It, you know, it was the first game we were able to actually do this, uh, and, and I don't know. We'll just, we'll just kind of see where it goes from here. And here's the breakdown on the numbers. We got into the specifics of this. Uh, Zach Lujan played seven series in the game. Taryn Christian played five. Uh, the snaps, 38 for Lujan in the game, 31 for Taryn Christian. In the first half, uh, Lujan, 32 snaps. Christian had seven, but that kind of evened it out in the second half. And you get the feeling uh, Taryn Christian's okay with this right now. Zach Lujan, maybe not so much, but he's making it work. They, they certainly are. And these are consummate team players, both of them. They understand their roles. Uh, and everybody knows TC's still learning. He's, he's just a rookie. You know, he's got a lot to learn before he's ready to come out uh, and be the all-around quarterback that a squad like this needs. And uh, of course, with the experience that Luan got last year, uh, we had a pretty good idea coming out of camp. He'd yeah. be the guy. And you saw last week why that is. As long as this offensive line continues to play the kind of football they did last Saturday, both of these guys, whichever one's going to be out there, is going to be successful. All right. And we'll uh, hopefully see a healthy Zach Luhan as the starter against uh, Illinois State coming up this Saturday. All right, Coach Stig with the big plays of the first half against Missouri State when we come back. Jack Rabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. Let's get to the first half at Missouri State, and there was definitely no looking past the Bears in this one. Well, uh, hopefully a coaching staff never overlooks an opponent, but surely our players did not. And, uh, you know, with the disappointing loss to UNI and then the, the, their record, uh, recipe for that. But we, we, we showed up and played. All right. And good bounce back, as you said. And you get Zach Lujan in the starting role again for the second week here, and we'll talk about him a little bit more later. But Jerian Butler has really turned into a great return man in the last couple of years. Hasn't he, he has. He's a gifted young man. He reads the field really well. And I, I'm going to give, uh, you know, the game plan was to play your best football, play every play like you can win the game. And that's our first play of the game. And we did that. And uh, we did had a lot of those in this football game. All right, out to midfield almost on Butler's return. Brady Mangarelli getting the start at running back. He rolls up over 140 yards. Yeah, Kyle was a little dinged up. Uh, and so Brady 
took the reins. It just seems like, uh, not who's hot, it just seems like we, we have three really, three really good running backs. Here you see a sprint kind of almost a trick play. It's just a truck play that starts with kind of an unbalanced look. So uh, great blocking at the point of attack. Yeah, you talked about blocking last week. You guys got it done this week, seven to nothing. Uh, after the run by Mangarelli, and then the defense stepping up, J.R. Plody making a tackle here. Yeah, we had a good game plan. Uh, they, they had a couple good plays against us in terms of schemes, but our coaches responded. Uh, but it, again, anytime the defense plays great, uh, good things are going to happen. Blowing open another big hole here for Brady. Yeah, it, it almost looks too easy, but again, let's give the fat guys some credit. And uh, the misdirection a little bit, the, the cutting back on that play, and and uh, a big play for us. I don't know how big Dallas Goddard's hands are, but they must be monstrous. And he's got some <laughs> sticky gloves on. That's a great catch. He's got sticky gloves. He's got really good hands. He's a gifted receiver. Uh, he's a pup still in our program. I can't imagine uh, the growth he's, the potential growth he has in him. All right, got into the red zone often. Got a couple of field goals as well as some touchdowns and a good game for Jake Carlson. Great game for Jay. Really wanted to finish in the end zone. I, you know, the, if you're playing championship level football, you get in the end zone. You play like this play, like Jr. beating his guy and and getting a sack and and every play you need to play like that. Ten to nothing. Jacks in the lead at the end of the first quarter. Go to the second here. And they tried to run a little fast on you. Third and one here, they come up short, and then they get into a fourth and one in the next play and go for it. Yeah, there's a lot of teams that try to get up and, 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 and get your muscles not not set so they can get the jump, and, and our guys did a great job. Here we're yelling mayday, meaning don't jump, watch the ball. And I don't know what their plan was here because their line doesn't come off, and so I don't know if it was a, a mess up, but uh, again, uh, good play for us. We were ready. We did what was coached, and uh, credit to our defensive coaches and our players. All right. Uh, can't get a points or touchdown out of this drive after the uh, turnover on downs, but Carlson again, another field goal from 41 yards, 13 to nothing, Jack's on top, and then Trevor Wesley on a special teams tackle coming up here. Yeah, the, the, this is one of the highlights of the football game. Not this play, but this team. Jay Carlson put the ball in the corner all day long, sometimes in the end zone, and our guys were relentless coming down the, the field. That was one of our biggest concerns going in the game, their return guy, and we literally shut him down. All right, how did Zach Lujan look? 15 out of 19 passes. I, I thought he did a great job. He, a lot of plays he ran were checks. And so uh, a lot of things you and I don't know what's going on. The fans surely don't. He's checking us into the right place. So he had con command of the game. All right, gets Winicky again here across the middle. Uh, this drive ends in a field goal as well by Jay Carlson. It's 16-0, Jacks in the lead. And then uh, some more defense coming up here. Cole Langer will make a stop. But this is just dominant. You see him take his guard back there and then make the tackle. It looks like Kellen is lazy there because he's standing. That was the design to, to really let uh, Cole free up, have a free pass rush, don't bump each other out. Uh, off, off, off the routes. All right, two minute drill here. Winicky. I don't know if he's 100% healthy yet, but he looks pretty good. He's he's a good player. He's a very athletic, big guy. He's strong. Uh, he is not healthy, but uh, he's getting better. All right, big catch there. Uh, and then we find Matt Raymond for his first career touchdown for the Jaguars. Yeah, Jack this is so cool. A senior and a guy that earned a scholarship. Just a, a great effort guy in our program. I love guys like this. I love Matt Raymond and, and uh, makes the play here. Uh, be excited, all right? That's that's a fun deal to have happen. Really good protection there again by the guys up front. It's 22 to nothing, Jacks on top. And then Kellen Solik, what happens on this interception? The same defense we just ran. Uh, he's supposed to hold the guard and, and he's just raiding the quarterback's eyes. That is not the intention that he gets an interception especially with that body, but uh, <laughs> yeah. big play, potentially a huge play in the game uh, made by him. He, he told me he got more tired uh, during the celebration than he did during the play. <laughs> and you get another shot at a long field goal after that. Don't make it, but it's 22 to nothing at halftime. And just, you played very well in the first half in all three phases, didn't you, really? We did, and uh, it, it field position, we had unbelievable field position, starting out with a kickoff. We had good punts. We had great coverage on the on our kickoff. That has a huge impact in a football game. And you're talking about on the defensive front there, sometimes you're going to you're gonna drop guys back in coverage. Solik did on this interception. You can play some games up front with those defensive linemen. Right? Without a doubt. I mean, that... Uh, Solik is supposed to just stand there and hold up the guard. He's supposed to rush a little harder so he doesn't drop back and give Cole a free rush. Because sometimes if both guys go inside, they bump each other off there and you end up blocking yourself. And so uh, Kellen benefited from getting an interception and when he's just supposed to hold the guard up. Well, Jake Winicky gets loose in the third quarter for a big play. Taryn Christian finds Connor Landberg to finish it up. And we've got the second half with Coach Stiglmeyer coming up.
Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. All right, the Jackrabbits up 22 to nothing at Missouri State to start the second half. SDSU trying to nail down its first shutout on the road since 1998. And here is Stig with the second half. We had three penalties. We had no turnovers. We uh, played, uh, I think, our best football game. Our guys believe they can play better, but I think we played our best football game. All right, up 22 to nothing at halftime. And just some quick shots here in the second half. Jesse Bobbitt comes up with a sack at another very good game at linebacker. And that, that really is a coverage sack. He wanted to throw the three-step, and our corner took it away, and, and uh, other people benefit from great play by a, a great team defense. Good play action here, good time again. Uh, and and uh, the, the really, we ran a crossing route and they lost Jake, and it looks a lot easier than it should have been. All right, 29 nothing Jackrabbits after another touchdown by Jake Winicky on the throw from Lujan. And then Taron Christian did get some time in this game as well, going with the two quarterback system, and he'll hook up with Brady Mangarelli. Yeah, this is a great athletic move. That's potentially a two yard loss, and Brady turns it into a big play. You know, uh, easy throw for Taron. Uh, get something going, and, and you guys have to make plays. I mean, you have to have guys on the field that, that uh, beat people one-on-one. -on -one. Set it up again for Jay Carlson, his fourth field goal of the game to make it 32 to nothing. Jacks after three quarters. And then in the fourth quarter here, uh, still chugging along, Brady Mangarelli. Just, yeah, it just runs hard. Uh, you saw the line move their defensive line. Uh, just a great effort by Brady, and Brady is a, an effort guy. Red zone here, second and goal, Terry Christian Pretty good move here. Doesn't panic. The freshman snap might have been a little off, but still have you guys have not turned the ball over in the Missouri Valley Football Conference yet this season. That's crazy. We, we've, we've done a good job protecting the ball. Uh, that that was a perfect call. Here you see uh, Taron Bias some time with his feet and get it to Connor Landberg for a touchdown. Uh, big play. Anytime you have a quarterback that can do that, that puts so much pressure on a defense. Good to see Landberg. Couple of touchdowns in the last couple of weeks as well. 39 to nothing in the final and. The, the two quarterback system, this was a good game to get it going in. How, how did it work with Christian and Lujan both playing? Uh, I think it worked very well. Uh, you know, the toughest part of the whole deal was our center snapping. We had five bad snaps in the game, and so uh, their stats, their confidence, all that stuff is affected by that. Right. Talked about blocking last week and another good game to get it fixed in. How was the, the blocking up front for the fat guy? Uh, it's pretty good. It really is pretty good. D you know, a different team. There's different matchups. Uh, but our guys responded to the, not the criticism, but the coaching and uh, did a better job. All right. And as you said, just you take care of business in these games. You're, the program is to this point where you should win this game 39 to nothing, shouldn't you? And you, you played very clean to get it done. Well, you want to go play your best football. And, 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 and they've talked in every media outlet. Uh, and you don't measure yourself against the team, essentially. You, you measure yourself against how well you can play. And when, you, when we grade a guy, we don't grade him differently versus Missouri State as you and I, North Dakota State, it doesn't matter. You grade him, what is his potential? Did he do his job? And offensively, Zach Lujan looks like he is back and ready to assume the quarterback duties again as the starter, right? How's it going to work this week? Well, I, I think we're going to play the two quarterback uh, system. You know, uh, Zach is our starter and we pulled the red shirt on, on Terran. That would be the plan. I haven't looked at the game plan. It's a little early yet, but uh, I, I expect that's what we'll do. All right, 39 nothing final. Jake Carlson, by the way, the Missouri Valley Conference uh, Special Teams Player of the Week. And the Jackrabbits are 3-0 and on the road now, Hank, this season. The win at Kansas at Youngstown State. That was a very good win. They beat Missouri State, uh, but they're 3-0 and on the road. Yeah, and whatever they're doing with their road routine is obviously working. Uh, winning a football game is, is very difficult to do on the road, especially in this conference. Uh, but they've got the magic formula that what they know when, when they head out onto the town and, and hop into the hotel and go through their walkthroughs, they're feeling good, they're feeling confident. Uh, that's exactly what you need in order to be a championship football team. Now, how do they figure out how to bring some of that magic home to Coughlin Alumni Stadium? All right, they get Illinois State at home uh, this weekend and then at USD and at Western Illinois to uh, finish up the regular season and we'll see what happens from there. Up next, we've got the Rabbit Fire interview with Jackrabbit quarterback Zach Lujan. Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back in this week's Rabbit Fire interview. David Brown sits down with Jack Rabbit quarterback, the Alaskan assassin, Zach Lujan, and finds out, among other things, which 90s pop star Zach relaxes to. 
first question. Your Twitter handle is at Gaucho Gunslinger. How'd you come up with that one? Uh, when I was trying to create a, a Twitter, I wanted something creative, not just at Zach Lujan. Um, so I asked my best friend, and instantaneously, as if he'd been saving it his entire life, he just spits out Gaucho Gunslinger. So it kind of embodies my Mexican heritage as well as you know, the fact I'm a quarterback. What was the very first thing you thought when you walked onto the field at Missouri taking over for Austin? Uh, well, going in, as soon as Austin got hurt, my first thought was, where am I, where's my helmet? Um, because it was 40 yards away on the sideline. Uh, but as soon as I went in the game, you know, there wasn't much time to think. It was third and two, and we needed to get the first down. So it was more uh, just read the defense. And then after that, I kind of psyched myself out and started thinking, oh, I'm here, you know, I'm on the big stage. So I, I psyched myself out there a little bit. Which place is colder, Brookings or Anchorage? Brookings is colder. Anchorage definitely has more snow. A distinction between snow and cold. Right, right. Speaking of which, what is your favorite part of Alaska? We have a uh, we have a lake house um, uh, slightly up north in the Matsu area, and it's just it's just beautiful. Um, you know, there's mountains all around, and there's beautiful lakes, there's beautiful scenery all across the, all around. Uh, you might go to a river or something, and you'll just see a bear there fishing, and you know. Less than 100 yards away, there might be a float plane landing, and then you know, a guy fly fishing right next to him. So it's just all—it's a wonderful place. Aside from the football field, Coughlin alumni, what's your favorite part of Brookings? Favorite part of Brookings is uh, I'd say the entire SDSU campus. Um, you know, it's it's. It's not huge, um, but it's big enough where you can get lost your first couple times around. Um, did you get lost? I did get lost a couple times. And it's just a great atmosphere. Um, always upbeat people. Uh, you, know, it's, you rarely see the people walking around with their head down, not want to say anybody, hi to anybody. And everyone, there's always a friendly smile. So. You and the other QBs have a 100 yard race. Who wins? We go with my man Tyler Finnis. Um, he's a machine. It's as simple as that. You know, he doesn't he doesn't look very fast, but then the next thing you know, he's pulling away from everybody. Favorite TV show. Favorite TV show of all time was House. Why House? What, what, what was it about House that got the you? the Doctor Gregory House was very uh, he's you know a great mind, um, but at the same time he was. Uh, his morals weren't exactly sound, um, but he, he's just a very interesting person, I guess I'd say. Delving deep into character, I like that. What song do you listen to before the game to pump yourself up? Actually, I can't really pump myself up, otherwise I get too hyped and then, you know, all the reads and all our pregame plan goes out the window. So I have a Mariah Carey playlist that I listen to before every game. <laughs> that soothes you? That, that soothes me, it gets me ready. What is your favorite Coach John Stiglmeyer catchphrase? Holy nutmeg. It's just, uh, you know, the first time I heard it, it was just, what did he say? And then after that, it's just, all right, I like it. Have you ever caught yourself saying it? Do other guys say it because they hear it so often? Yeah, Austin Sumner, our quarterback last year, actually sent me a picture a couple weeks ago, and it was a picture of a jar of nutmeg, and then on top of it, he wrote the words holy, and then so it said holy nutmeg, and I thought that was funny. Last one, who plays you in a biography on your life? Uh, besides that one guy, Brady Mangarelli, um, I'd have to go with, I got nothing, <laughs> I got nothing. We got time. We got time? You got to an answer. <laughs> the, the great Russell Crowe would play me, um, the gladiator himself. <laughs> You're Mexican, he's Australian, doesn't hey, matter. Hey. You know, tomato, tomato, I guess. All right, thanks. Yeah. Thanks to Zach Lujan. Up next, Illinois State comes to Brookings on Saturday. The birds are unbeaten in the Missouri Valley, but a little shaky lately, maybe. We have a good feeling about this one. We'll tell you why coming up next. Jackrabbit Journal on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. Well, Jackrabbits are at home against Illinois State this Saturday. We will have the game live here on Midco Sports Network. Illinois State is the only unbeaten team right now in the Missouri Valley. The Redbirds are 5-0. and They lead the conference in rushing at a very healthy 242 yards per game. 
Coprich is the guy that it starts with. They're running back. He's an All-American. He's probably the best running back in America. And then they are, it's complemented with a quarterback that can throw the ball, but is really special when he runs the ball. So it's a, it's a, there's a threat uh, every time they touch the ball that they could go the distance. All right, Illinois State is number two this week in both of the national polls. Uh, the only loss they have is to the University of Iowa, a Big Ten team. Uh, but Illinois State beat UNI by eight. It was close. They won by two at Youngstown, where the Jackrabbits won big. Uh, Illinois State won by three at home this past Saturday against Indiana State, another team that the Jacks beat, which means probably nothing. But uh, Illinois State is going to come in, try to run the football against this good Jackrabbit defense. They certainly are. And this is such a big game on so many levels, Tom. It's, uh, you, you look at it, there, there are playoff implications on the line, conference championship implications, and not to mention the fact that this is the last game that will ever be played at Coughlin Alumni Stadium. Uh, the Redbirds are coming to do two things, run the football and play tough defense. Jackrabbits have got to be ready to go this week and follow up last week's positive performance by the offensive line, specifically with a second one this coming Saturday. All right, uh, Illinois State. By the way, beat the Jacks 45-10 to last year at Illinois State. Uh, we don't expect that at all. Uh, we'll see what the Jacks can do. We've got the game here live on Midco Sports Network at 2 o'clock, Illinois State and South Dakota State. Uh, we will see you next week on Jackrabbit Journal. Thanks for watching.